How's it going? Fox back again. Tone 2 Icarus. Um, I've been neglecting this, although I was working on it and some of my presets will be in the factory release. Uh, there was a lot of sort of first look videos that people done during the beta stage. Now it's out in full force, all the sort of little kinks ironed out. I will be doing a lot more videos showing you how it all works, step by step, sort of bit by bit. Uh, today I'm just going to go over the resynthesis part. Um, it's one of my most favourite parts. Just the way you can sort of drag loops in there and easily mangle them up with the effects, the different warp modes, the distortion and the filters. Ooh, it's endless. Um, there's two or three different ways where you can do it. You can choose to resynthesize by choosing one of these separate modes, the additive modes, the granulator mode, different time stretch modes. Or you can just simply navigate for a loop somewhere on your desktop. Let's just try and find... I'll tell you what, we'll do it inside Icarus so you can get the gist of it. Uh, so, resynthesize, easy create patch resynthesis. Click on it. Uh, I'm already in a folder here. This is Black Octopus Leviathan. They're just 110 B 10 BPM loops. I'll just pick one at random. Drag it in there. Do I want to trim it? No. So that is now resynthesized. Um, by default, um, it chucks the sample in, but it actually creates it into a wavetable. So, in the resynthesis mode, it automatically maps LFO1 to move the wave cycle through so it plays as the sample sounded. If we double click, control click the LFO, it now just turned the sound into a wavetable as if you were using it inside Serum. So. scan through the different pits as you would in Serum and with the wavetable sweep thing. Um, the way it plays it as a sample is it says it's LFO1 is already mapped to this wave. If you turn it to full, keep it on a ramp up, it means it's going to constantly move the wavetable around at a constant speed playing the sample through. And when it's checked on envelope or BPM on a quarter note I believe, we set it to BPM. That's now looping through at a quarter, if you get what I mean, like it's taking a bar. If we change the face slightly, it should get away with that, do away with that click. No, that must just be a, a zero crossing in, this, in the loop. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that unless we push the amp envelope out a bit. We'll live with it. Um, now you've got that sample in there. You can play it rhythmically. Um, it gets higher, the pitch goes up, if you get what I mean. Still plays at exactly the same speed, cycles through at exactly the same speed, speed, but changes the pitch as you play it up, as you would want it to do. Uh, once it's in there, you've got the sample in there. That's how easy it is to get it in there. Just drag it. So I'll show you again. Resynthesize, easy patch resynthesis. Choose the loop or the sound you want to go in there. Open it. Click no. It'll keep the whole sample as it is. It then in there automatically our LFO1 is controlling the wave so it's sweeping through playing the sample through at a certain speed as I say if you check it to BPM it's automatically on a quarter note and then you're in there ready to go once it's in there you've got oodles and oodles of capabilities just in this oscillator section alone you can go from mono mode to choose well, look at it all there's different unison modes let's try one of these hyper stereo modes Automatically gives it a load of depth, gives it new voices, spreads them across the spectrum. Turn the limiter on just to stop the clipping. And what this wave does then, it keeps cycling through from the start point uh, that you choose. So if you push the wave out a bit, it's going to start from a different point. What it does is it's it's like playing it from that point to the end at the same speed, so it appears to give it that slowdown effect. If we go all the way to the end, it's almost uh, 
I'll show you later on, you can get some cool effects when you have a beat running and you can play around with that. Um, once you choose your hyper mode, your unison mode or whatever in the oscillator section, um, it's already resynthesized, it tells you that. You can choose from all these different warp modes, so many different ones. I mean, let's just try the vocoder to start with. The good thing about this is you're not limited to just one warp mode, if you like, or one sort of algorithm. If you find one that you like, like this vocoder, if we go into the tool section, you can apply morph to wavetable. So this morph or warp mode, you can set it in stone in the in the wavetable. Bam. Now that vocoder is in there. It's resampled that sample that we had with that vocoder warp mode on it. So then you can go ahead and choose another one and just keep going. We can then choose the ring mod. You get a general idea. Right, I'm just going to leave this looping now. I've got a little kick that's sidechained to this, and I'm going to mess around with it and uh, keep choosing a few different warp modes, resampling it, add a filter in there, and get some really rhythmical going. Okay, let's hope this is on the right note. Uh, pitch it down an octave. Bring a delay in there to start with, a multi tap. Flander actually. This is just one oscillator, remember. Okay, let's bring in a filter. Bring in a low pass filter with a resonance. LFO3 is already mapped to it. Get this going. City feel. We can then put in filter two. Choose a totally different filter, something like a Stripe Bandpass 24B Digital. Set it so it's crossing over. Distortion mode, wave shape, just for the bandpass. Parallel actually. Got another effect, we might as well use it. Bring in the reverb. Table to the north and bring another one in.
just get some hats in there and a clap. Uh, one thing I like to do is if you send the mod wheel to this wave index, uh, remember it says it changes the starting point of where the loop plays from and then it appears to give it that slowdown effect. So if we choose wave one, say it's uh, full, we can play with this while we're going along then, sort of change the rhythm of it. <laughs> Really sort of trickly, kooky, driven, staying in a different place. the step LFO plus to do the resonance of two. As you can see, very easy to get some cool, funky rhythms inside this thing. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, let's try and get a little drum groove in there so we can show you what that sounds like as well. I mean, that was more of a vocal loop than a kicky loop. Um, let's initialize it. Let's resynthesize. Uh, with drums, you're better off choosing these sort of time stretch, blocky sort of things. If we go to this PC, F, libraries. DMB samples and breaks. Let's try and get a break in there. Let's get a classic Amen. Amen. Amen deep. Let's try that. I'm not too sure how this is going to work. Doesn't sound bad, we need some a bit more rhythmical. Let's try a different one. Let's try again. Let's try resynthesis. Let's just pick another random one. Let's 
Should have packed work. Found one that was going to work well for this. Let's try these small blocks. Amen, bitch. Yeah, that's sounding a lot better. Uh. There we go. So we've got a real cool drum groove in there. We'll do the same sort of thing. We'll mess around with it. I'll let it play again. Love a more tap. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit with some saturation. Distortion Square are like your bend negative and stuff like that. Hours of endless fun. Um, anyway, you should have got some idea what you can do with this resynthesis engine now. So the amount of different things you can do with these tools, once you've got it in there, you can do everything. You can create create it as a vo vocode, a wavetable. Uh, but for generally resynthesizing things, it does an excellent job of taking the incoming audio and keeping it as it is. So you can then totally destroy it. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, subscribe as always. Thanks for watching. Cheers.